Well, sir, let's... Also, art and Sam are another avenue to protect your will. Did you say art, sir? Yes. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. And, of course, you also advise and are on the board of directors of many... Uh, you know, powerhouse companies. Uh, and uh, clearly, uh, whereas housing prices have gone down, we do see farmland all over the world skyrocketing. Uh, and obviously, is that because the elites and, and those that know what's going on are rushing into farmland, sir? Well, I know quite a few extremely well to do people who have second thoughts about life in big cities and the security in big cities if they the unrest in the Middle East would also spread to developed countries. And also they also know that we might have problems with uh, modern warfare that would include cyber war or switching of the electricity or biological warfare that would touch, and terrorism that would touch the big cities. So they want to be safe. They well, buy an island, they buy farmland in the middle of nowhere. Well, that's what I was about to say. Um, I, I know a lot of wealthy people, you know, truly wealthy that I've run into here in Austin. And, of course, you obviously have run into about a million times more than I have. You know, we're running in the highest circles. Well, I don't think so. I'm a social defender. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, you know, just running into well-known you know, uh, people off record told me four years ago that the U.S. and the entire world economy was going to collapse via the derivatives and that they were basically fleeing. I mean, I even know about John Wayne, part of his family just ran off to Central America. I mean, so many people are, are, are evacuating. Some of the richest people in Israel, uh, it's been in the news, are evacuating Israel. Uh, I mean, what do the elite know that the general public hasn't been let in on, doctor? Well, there's another element. Because of the advent of computers, the fax machine, and in the last 20 years, the Internet, if I'm a hedge fund manager, if I'm a well-to-do person, I can run my business from anywhere. I sit here in the north of Thailand. I have Bloomberg. I have computer access. I have everything. So... I don't need to be in a big city. I can choose a lifestyle to be in a small city and have a larger space or to be in the countryside. So that's a big part of the shift. I, I had a caller earlier who, uh, before you came on who wanted me to ask you, uh, about uh, gold mining supplies versus demand, and could China or some other country or group dump a bunch of gold on the market and really knock it down far? Or is, from what I've read, China is mining a lot, but consuming it and selling it because of demand? Well, first of all, if you look at the international reserve at the hands of central banks, and the wealth accumulation over the last 20 years among well-to-do people. The international reserves have grown from $1 trillion to now $9.5 trillion. The Chinese, they have $2.5 trillion. The Asians have 70% of the $9.5 trillion. The Asians, they have... 2% of these reserves invested in gold, very little. The Indian, uh, the Reserve Bank of India bought yeah, a year ago 200 tons at roughly $1,040. Now it's 1400 The Chinese, it's kind of a lot of faith for them to go into the open market and buy and announce that they're buying gold. But what they produce, they keep, and they have given incentives and created programs in China whereby individuals can now buy gold. So they're bullish on gold? 
Yeah, I mean, for sure, they're not bullish on the U.S. dollar, and they're not bullish on Mr. Obama, and they're not bullish, they were never bullish on Mr. Bush. So in layman's terms, doctor, you've got all these countries sitting on trillions of dollars of dirty crud paper, not worth the you know, paper Correct. it's, it's, it's written That's on, and so... Point. And, and, and so the entire magnetic or, or, or gravitational pull is only towards metals. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think that investors gradually realize that, say, if you're an investor for the next 10 years, what you don't want to own is, say, a 30 years U.S. government bond. You don't want to own a 10 years U.S. government bond at the yield of 3.6%. So what else is there? You can buy stock, you can buy precious metals, you can buy commodities. But commodities, the industrial ones and the agricultural ones and the stock are very volatile and usually the supply response is relatively short. In other words, there's a shortage of wheat and soybeans, corn. Within one year, you can plant more. But in the case of precious metals, you can't do that. The same for oil. The supply response is very slow. And so the Chinese, if they could, they would buy all the American oil companies. Chevron, ExxonMobil, Marathon Oil, whatever it is, and BHP and Rio Tinto. But politically, these countries, I mean, the U.S., Australia, Canada, will not allow the Chinese to do that. So what else do they want to do? They go and buy concessions in Venezuela, in Latin America, in general, and in Africa, Central Asia, and so forth and so on and develop their own resource. Mr. Faber, is it accurate to say that we're buying junk here in the U.S. with our money, they're buying real hard assets, is it accurate that, they own, that, that, that they're now producing over 90% of rare earth minerals, the Chinese? That is correct. Okay. But the U.S. Could, could produce much more. But the problem in the U.S. is that exploration, like Generally speaking, capital spending, capital spending, which means education, R&D, infrastructure, plants, and equipment was neglected. Yes, sir. Because the government's economic policies and the federal economic policy, the federal board's economic policies target consumption and not investment. Yes, sir. We're almost out of time. In the last three minutes we have with you, um, are we in a global depression? Are we entering one? Are, or, or are we going to enter one? And uh, just overall summing up the state of the world economy. And uh, You mentioned earlier on the world, the word end game. We yeah. are in the end game, but we are currently in a cracker boom. A cracker boom is when you postpone a recession through money printing and credit growth. The credit growth is not strong in the private sector, but it's much worse. It's in, it's in the government sector. And the government is the most unproductive factor in economic life. And so this crack of boom will end very badly. But before it ends badly, we'll have money printing, very high inflation, and when everything fails, the U.S. will go to war. They are already in war, but they'll increase it. Absolutely. And you're saying two to four years is, is, is the main vector zone? Well, in my view, by printing money, you can postpone the evil, the, the end of the end game. Uh, for, say, seven to ten years. Really? In Latin America, they did it between 1980 and 89. But, but now it's, it's but I mean, now that the hangover is so much bigger, and it looks like everything is starting to accelerate uh, so much faster. And you say we have dumb presidents. Well, it's just they're just looting the country. Um, I mean, you know, for the special... They are deluding the country. They're lying. Yes. And uh, the fact is simply this. For the typical household, and I'm not 
speaking here of the Goldman Sachs partners and Wall Street. But for the typical household, the medium household, the average American, the standards of living have gone down. Yes. And they will continue to go down under the present economic policies. And that's why they put a police state grid in preemptively. It's, it's, it's extremely premeditated. Well, Mr. Faber, uh, the website's gloomboomdoom.com. We haven't had you on in about a year. I know you're very busy. I want to thank you for joining us. And it's my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, sir, and I look forward to uh, speaking to you in the near uh, future. Again, gloom, boom, doom. So do I. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon, sir. Amazing information. Oh, boy, I tell you, and that guy is super high-powered, and his predictions are spot on. And uh, we're not being negative here. It's best to know the truth and make preparations for it, isn't it?